you guys. Hope everyone is safe and well out there. That was a little jam in the key of B flat minor, and it was called Swing in the Blues. It was from the Anderton's Jam Tracks by Mr. Peter Honore. The link for that is down in the description below. That's a really cool blues jam track. I love playing over stuff like that all the time. And I've got my Epiphone Lucille here today, and we're gonna talk a little bit about blues solo. So we're gonna talk about five tips that are gonna make you a better lead guitar player. There are a ton of things that people struggle with when it comes to playing lead guitar. And in this video, the five tips we talk about are gonna help you break out of that box. Tip number one, learn your pentatonic shapes. Learn all five positions of the pentatonic. Here they are in the key of A minor. Now remember the pentatonic is just five notes. If you take that from the major scale as intervals, it's the one, the flat three, the four, the five, and the flat seven. I recommend learning your intervals and learning the notes of the scale. So here is that in A minor. We're gonna use the notes A, C, D, E, and G. A is my one, which is my root. C is my flat third. D is my four. E is my five. And G is my flat seven. So here's shape one. It starts on the fifth fret of the low E string. Shape two starts from the second note of the scale. So now instead of going A, C, D, E, G, we're going C, D, E, G, A, and we're starting from the eighth fret of the low E string. The third shape starts from the 10th fret of the low E string, which is a D note. So now we're playing D, E, G, A, C. Fourth shape starts from an E, so it's E, G, A, C, D. And the final shape starts from a G, so it's G, A, C, D, E. Once you've learned all five shapes, you can then start to put them together and see where your licks fit into each shape, which brings me very nicely onto tip number two, combining shapes. Chances are you're probably stuck in that first position. Everyone gets stuck in that. So let's imagine you've got a lick like this. And you may play licks like that all the time and you wanna know how to get away from that. We can actually go somewhere else with this. So instead of going through the lick in the normal way, let's try and add some notes from the second shape. So instead of coming back down the scale, I could go up. Then I'm integrating notes then from my second shape. Another great way you can combine shapes is to look at the notes of what you play. Let's imagine I'm playing this lick. If we break that down on a note by note basis, I'm playing a G note and an A note, a C and a D, but I'm bending that D note up to an E. Now let's look at the notes from the other shapes. Now there's a degree of learning the notes of the fretboard in order to make the most out of this tip. But once you know you are on the fretboard, you can then start applying this tip. So let's find another G note to start from. So we can start here, which is at the top end of the second shape. Because those notes are the same, I can do the same lick. I could also take that down an octave. I could take it into my third shape. I could also take it into my fourth shape. So really what we're doing here is we're mapping out licks that we may already play in the first position in other shapes of the scale. Now this is really useful when we wanna grow these licks into more interesting things. So if I wanna combine my first and second shape with that same lick, and I know where those notes are, I can then start to do that in the other positions. When we start to combine scale shapes together, we have new and interesting ways of continuing our lead passage. So if I'm playing in that first shape, it's really, really easy for me to just fall straight into my old habits. But if I move that lick to my third shape like this, straight away when I get to the end of that lick, I'm now in my fourth position of the scale. This is somewhere completely new for me. So this is gonna inspire me to go somewhere else with a lick that I might not go in the first shape. Mm -hmm. 
tip number three, phrasing. Phrasing is probably the most important skill you're ever gonna learn as a lead guitar player. Phrasing is not what you play, but how you play it. And this is why all the great, great guitar players out there like Eric Clapton and BB King and Buddy Guy and John Mayer, this is why they have such unique sounds. They're great at phrasing. They may all be playing the same notes, they may all be playing the same scales, but it's how they play it that conveys a message. Here's a really simple exercise you can use today to improve your phrasing and your vocabulary when it comes to doing phrasing in a guitar solo. I'm gonna go back to that first backing track that we started the video on. So we're going back to the key of B flat here. So this is the pentatonic shape, but from the sixth fret. And I'm just gonna use four notes here. I'm gonna use the six and eight on the D string and the six and eight on the G string. So just four notes. And I'm gonna play over that track for a whole minute. I'm not gonna go outside of those four notes. So I was throwing in a bunch of things like hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, and string bends in there, but the only notes I was actually fretting were the six and eight on the D and G strings. Now what the phrasing allows me to do is the different ways that I can use those notes to expressively play. So I was doing all sorts of licks like this. never straying from those four notes. Even though the string bends were giving me notes outside of those four fretted notes, I was still sticking rigidly to that pattern. When you're developing your phrasing, it's a great exercise to pick a backing track in whatever key you want and limit yourself to four notes. Play those four notes for as long as you want and try and come up with new inventive ways of playing them. The more ways you can play simple patterns and notes like that, the more in-depth and innovative you're gonna be with your phrasing. Build it up, Try it in different scale positions. You know, you could take those four notes and take them up an octave to here and play them an octave higher. Do all the same patterns up there. Find different places you can do that in all five pentatonic shapes. And that leads me nicely on to tip number four, get out of your comfort zone. Now we've already said, you know, your comfort zone is that first position pentatonic. Of course it is because that's where everyone starts. But if we really want to get innovative with our playing, we need to go outside of that comfort zone. We talked a little bit about linking the pentatonic patterns, but really, you know, there's a couple of those positions that people are gonna to struggle to use at first, the third shape being one of them. A great tip for this is to, again, pick a backing track in whatever key you want, play only in that position that you're uncomfortable with. I always enjoy doing this with the third position of the pentatonic, because I think this is one of the more difficult ones to use. So again, I'm gonna put the B flat backing track on, and I'm gonna play in B flat, but only using the third position of the minor pentatonic. You can do this with any 
of the five positions of the pentatonic in any key. Now again, I did that just in B flat minor because that's the backing track that I was jamming over, but any position you want to do this, you can do the same idea. Being a great lead guitar player isn't always about just playing a million and one notes. Sometimes it's just about playing really good. You can play five notes really, really well. And sometimes moving outside your comfort zone allows you to do our next tip a little more, which is tip number five, listen. Now we're going outside of our comfort zone, going into position three or position four or whatever other position we want to go into. Listen to the track. Hear the notes from the shapes you're playing. They may not be as intuitive as shape one, but listen to them. Listen to what those notes are doing with the track. Try and craft melodies and licks that actually say something. You're not just playing a thousand and one notes over a track for the sake of it. Use your phrasing exercises in these unfamiliar positions and just listen to how they interact with the chords. Learning how all these shapes fit together is really the key to being a great guitar player. And also on the subject of listening, listen to all your favorite artists. Listen to B.B. King and John Mayer and Buddy Guy and Eric Clapton and anyone else who you think has got great phrasing. Listen to how they play notes. Listen to the way they manipulate shapes and patterns all over the fretboard and bring that knowledge into your own playing. If you go away and practice these five tips, I'm pretty confident it's gonna make you a better lead guitar player. Most of this isn't, you know, it's not rocket science and it's not unobtainable. With a little bit of work and a little bit of crafting, you can turn yourself into an amazing lead guitar player. But the real thing here is listen. Just listen to everything going on, even through the other four tips we've talked about, aside from the listening tip. Listening is key. Listen to your surroundings as a guitar player. Play what suits the song. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. And please let me know in the comments below how you guys have gotten on with these tips. Have they benefited you? Are you now feeling like a more confident lead player? Let me know. I can't wait to hear how you've gotten on with this. And if you've got any tips and tricks you think are really cool, please post them below. I can't wait to see what you guys have been doing in your own playing. Thank you all so much for watching. See you guys soon.